team effort. Okay, the recording is started. Okay, guys, we're live. All right, it's about 8.30. Uh, meetings are ordered. Well, Ryan's not here. He's on Zoom. Oh, Ryan is there. Ryan, do you feel like calling the... Uh, yeah, I can I can still call the roll. I just didn't want to get any of you guys sick. Um, so Lance, let's see Lance, Jessica, is Jessica there? I don't know if we have two way audio here. Oh, uh, you guys not hear me? I can hear you. Hold on, Brian. If yeah. you're talking, we can't hear you. Hold on. I can hear you right. online. <clears throat> we got to turn this TV volume up, Lance. We can try, or I'm not going to grab the speakers off of. Uh... Yeah, Rob says he can hear Ryan. Great. Okay, yeah. so we can hear him. Grab some speakers. Off. It's a speaker. Speaker back here. Okay. I just figure out how it up. Okay, pausing a minute. Uh, pausing the meeting for a moment while we figure out sound issues. That should be easy. Or video or issues. Is the hard part. Is there a oh. External speakers. Which device did you plug in? Oh, that. I just unplug these speakers. Oh, okay. I just need someone to talk and see. If yeah, it works. Ryan, does that you... work better? Yeah, can that's better. better? Cool. Okay. Hang on one second. I'm turning you up. All right. All right. Go ahead, Ryan. See if that works. Awesome. So Lance, I saw you. Jessica, I think I saw Jessica. Correct. Yep. Can you hear me? Yep. We can hear awesome. you. Awesome. Mitch is here. Your Broden's here. Mr. Hyde? Yes, here. Excellent. Mr. Perry? Present. And Mr. Reed is here. We are all here. All right. Um, Doctrine and agenda, any changes or additions? I think we just want to add the old business. Um, not objections. We'll accept the agenda or adopt the agenda. Uh, okay, public comment. Anyone in the room want to speak? Pam? No? Not this morning. All right. Um, we only have two. No. How many? Ten minutes to go. Eight. Oh. Larry, can you see if anyone has raised their hand? Recording in progress. Eight. Eight. Hey, Rob, you're up. Rob Pattinson of Sio Township. Uh, thank you, Chief Hood and Lieutenant Baird and Captain Coke and Assistant Chief Armstrong for the meeting we had with you guys last week. That was extremely informative. And uh, there was a small group of residents uh, that were able to chat with you. And that was very informative. Thank you for that. Uh, I've got some notes from that and I'd like to sort of uh, um, ask some questions and help you guys get it in the record. Sio Township Fire Department is the most important function our local government provides because it is the only department that saves lives. As such, it deserves to be spotlighted as our pride and joy. Instead, its treatment is our shame. It is inexcusable that we have asked the fire department to do an important job while we hamstring them at every turn for over two decades. Why doesn't the fire chief have control of the funds for the department he's responsible for? Why does someone within the township with no experience or qualifications for running a fire department have control over those funds? Right now, the fire department have only four or five, I beg your pardon, have five paid on-call firefighters. What I didn't understand before and what we understand now is that they get paid $15 an hour for shift work around the station and $21 an hour for active fires. They get paid nothing to be available on standby. For comparison, McDonald's and Burger King are advertising $15 an hour to start. 
paying firefighters minimum wage is not sustainable. The end result will be people won't be willing to do such dangerous work for minimum wage. The fire, the fire department already has experienced this difficulty. They would have more paid on call staff if they could. There simply aren't people available at that wage. The investment in new hires is very time sensitive. It takes a minimum of four months for a firefighter training, followed by two to four months of EMT training, followed by several months of probationary status as they train with the township's firefighters. It takes 12 to 18 months to become a full-time, <clears throat> excuse me, to become a full-time firefighter that the chief has confidence is capable of manning the equipment and responding safely. Doug Armstrong highlighted the changes in the modern home that made response time more important than ever. With the addition of petroleum-based plastics to our homes, we now have the potential for fires to progress exponentially faster than they did in the old days of wood, cotton, and wool. In fact, there is enough plastic in a modern office chair to cause a typical living room to flash over, which means the room heats up so much while the chair burns that the air itself, along with the smoke and unburned fumes, ignites everything else in the room. All of that means that it is more important than ever to be within five road miles of a fire station and the resulting faster response time. Pat Stein highlighted the $1.5 million Board of Trustees mistake. Chief Hood asked if we had heard Mark Perry's explanation of putting the $1.5 million debt into the new SAD would be taxing the residents twice for the fire station renovation. I want to highlight this again. Mark Perry, your analysis of that double tax aspect of that mistake and trying to resolve it with the SAD is extremely important for the Board of Trustees to understand. And I hope that message gets through to them. And thank you for that, Mark. Well done. Uh, Kathleen Brandt highlighted how the public benefit contributions at region projects are backwards. Crossroads wants to give $80,000 to the fire department and use $500,000 for sidewalks as their contr contribution. That's backwards. It should be $500,000 to infrastructure, including fire and utilities. Parks and Pathways already has a millage to support these kinds of projects. So does the LPC. Woodview wants to contribute $250,000 to the fire department and use a million dollars for sidewalks as its public benefits. Same with Heritage Woods. $115,000 to the fire department and several hundred thousand dollars for paths. All of those public benefit ratios are backwards. Public benefits should go into infrastructure that benefits all residents. Right now, that's the fire department. There are too many pet projects happening in SIO that are benefiting from too much of our taxes. We need to remind people to read the ESCI report, the recommended plans to better serve the township. That group was completely unbiased and independent of the area. We really need an actuary to help analyze the township's taxes and how an improvement in ISO rating could help offset the cost of the new fire SAD. The example of the chief gave of the resident in the southeast corner that wrote him of his change in insurance rate due to the company's analysis for the township's ISO rating is compelling. Going from $590 a year to $1,500 a year is an eye-opening realization. Imagine if going from an ISO 10 to an ISO 3 could save residents over $1,000 a year. Again, this is why we need an actuary. And then, <clears throat> second to last here, in 2009, the fire department asked for a 1.5 mil fire SAD, and the powers that be uh, refused that and put through a 0.9 mil SAD in 2009. And he, the powers that be at the time said they can't sell that idea of the 1.5 mil, so they chopped it down to 0.9. And then in 2019, the fire department really needed a 1.9 mil, um, and 1.65 mil was the bare minimum they could handle. And again, without telling the fire department, the powers that be chopped it down to a 1.35 mil, essentially gutting the ability of the fire department to do its job safely. 
we need to really highlight that aspect of the financing as well. And Bob Groden, you said long ago that you felt outnumbered, and I can't tell you how critical your, in my opinion, how critical your analysis of well, what we're doing and trying to do things as efficiently and and um, carefully as possible is critical to this process. And then lastly, I've got one question. I would just want to clarify the 911 dispatch issue. So a 911 call <clears throat> goes into the sheriff dispatch in the basement of 705 North Seed and then takes two plus minutes to ascertain the nature of the emergency. And then they dispatch the sheriff police. And then if needed, that office sends the caller to the fire dispatch, which takes another two plus minutes to ascertain what is needed. And then that other office dispatches dispatches fire and HVA. And my question is, does it dispatch fire and HVA at the same time? Or is it the initial sheriff 911 office that dispatches HVA? And then where is the fire dispatch center? As I remember years ago, 911 was housed in the Hogback Road Station. Was that for both fire and police? And does the city of Ann Arbor has it have it has does the city of Ann Arbor have its own dispatch? Thank you for the extra time. I really appreciate that. And thank you for the meeting we had with you. Thank you. Yes, please do. Uh, yes, so your analysis is uh, reasonably correct. I can't speak specifically to time periods, but an initial 911 call is answered at 705 North Zeeb in the basement, regardless the of the call type. The correct. That call, um, the sheriff's dispatchers answer that and begin dispatching police if needed. That call is then transferred to Huron Valley Ambulances Dispatch Center, uh, which is in Pittsfield Township. From that location, uh, both fire and EMS are dispatched. Uh, as to the time periods, I, I can't speak to how long it takes the sheriff's office to dispatch calls. Um, I can, through a reporting software, see how long it takes for HVA once they get the call to dispatch us. Uh, in Ann Arbor City, um, both police and fire are dispatched police by uh, 705 North Z, fire and EMS by HVA. Uh, everyone in the county, fire-wise, is dispatched by HVA. And, and if I missed any of your points, please uh, jump back in. And... No, that was perfect. Thank you very much, Chief. Appreciate it. Thank you. To someone who doesn't necessarily understand all of the fine points of that, it seemed very inefficient. So they have two different dispatch units, but that's what I don't understand all the intricacies, but that's not normal. <laughs> okay, all right. Done. Recording in progress. M most efficient would have everybody in the same building. Uh, least efficient is more spread out. And Chief, my, I'm sorry, Chief. No, go ahead. Um, my understanding is that given that our sheriff's patrol contract is up, that you're going to be talking to the sheriff a bit about dispatch issues. Yes. Okay. Yeah, not only uh, do I have the opportunity, but uh, County Chiefs Association is engaging in that discussion as well okay. uh, to Great. improve efficiencies between the two dispatch right. units. Rob, hold on. Julian, you had your hand up. Did you change your mind? Uh Good morning. No, I haven't changed my mind. Okay. <laughs> um, Chief Hood, question. So the time, um, when you give us the report for the time from when you receive, is it from when you receive? So if somebody calls for an emergency, is the time that you report from the time that they call for the emergency or the time that you receive from dispatch until you get there? I report two different times. I report a time it takes for HVA to process the call. And then I report a time from when we're dispatched until we arrive on scene. Okay, so great. our call processing time is averaging. The Recording in progress. Are dispatched to us quicker. Lower priority calls take longer. There's more questions to answer. 
as an example, if you know the uh, uh, HVA gets the call, said, "Hi, there's a building on fire." <laughs> that one gets out quick because there's not a whole lot of questions that go along with that. Um, sometimes a medical call will have a lot of questions that go with it. Hey, someone fell. Okay, are they injured? Yes. Where are they injured at? Are they bleeding? Are they conscious? And so on down the line. So those will typically be a little slower to dispatch. Um, I do not have access to the time it takes for our primary PSAP at 705 North Z to get that to HPA. Mm -hmm. Don't know that time difference. Do mm -hmm. you? Um, I have a question for Bob Hyde. Um, you're on the Planning Commission. And something that Rob just said about the developers, I know that they give a, um, a community benefit as part of their deal, I guess, or whatever. But I don't, from what I understood, it's what the township asks of them to donate. Not, we don't, they don't come and say, well, I know you want um, parks or pathways and we're going to give you $500,000 and then um, and I don't think that anybody has brought up the fire, um, donating to fire department until recently. So um, is it, I know it's a negotiation, but it's not the developer that's saying this is what we're going to give. It's the township asking for the benefit and how much. Could you clarify that, please? Yeah, the answer is yes and no to what you're saying. Okay. The, the developer does offer um, the, the Planning Commission tries to influence and the Board of Trustees approves what they want and there is some negotiation by a subset, I understand, of the board prior to it going before the board after it comes up in the Planning Commission. So it's a process. And the final say has to do with what the board of trustees wants to approve. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I will say that preliminary step, it, as a board member who's not ever been involved in those negotiations, they're all but said and done by the time it comes to the final board. So it's been, you know, um, informal group of planning commission members and board members. And, and while you have to approve it, it's hard to amend what's been prepared for you at you know for the meeting at the last minute, unless you have a really strong objection. You're really only influencing the next time something comes before you. If you were to draw a line in the sand and say, I won't, I won't accept it anymore unless it's this, this, or this, you might get it in the next reason, you know, the next uh, proposal that comes before you. It's hard, but that's your job to influence it, Jillian. I'm sorry to tell you that, that way, but. No, not at all. I'm happy to take that role. So it, it, there are policies, are there set policies regarding this community benefit um, negotiations? And would those policies be with the planning commission or with the board? There are no adopted policies. I believe that Jane Vogel, Jan Culbertson, and Will Hathaway may have been drafting something up to try to kind of standardize things, but nothing's ever been adopted to my knowledge, David. Not to my knowledge. Not when I was on the board. No. Nope. There is some, some talk about putting it into PUDs in the in the PUD ordinance. Um, what do you want to put in there that you want permanent? I mean, you have to revise that ordinance if you want to change that then. So if you want to be flexible, you know, you can make it a policy rather than an ordinance. But there is some some in the ordinance. Okay. Well, I think that's something for us to look at. Um, infrastructure is very important, much more so than the parks and pathways, just as Rob said. Um, it's There's nothing wrong with parks and pathways or whatever, um, but safety comes first. And as with our growing township, we need to keep up with our fire department, our sheriff, um, deputies, and water. Um, so anyway, I will be looking more into that. Thank you. And, you know, this committee, I really enjoy watching and listening and, and whatnot. You, you work really well together. And I'm glad that I see different points of view. And it seems like you're coming to a consensus for the most part. Um, but thank you so much for your service. Let me just comment once on that contribution issue. 
if a developer is willing to contribute $500,000 for parks and pass or whatever, and $100,000 for public safety, he's contributing, he's committed to contributing $600,000. What does he care if we put half in fire and half in parks? What does he care? Or she? Oh, I have a guess, but go ahead. Uh, they care because part of their development gets to come towards community benefit. If they want to put <clears throat> pathways through their development, the residents that they're putting it in there for benefit. And it's a it's a selling job. They get to count some of what they're putting in as a community benefit. So and it's not cash. Right. Sorry. They're so, just paying a contractor to do more work. Yeah. Sorry, that doesn't count as community benefit in my mind. Well, there you go. It's a little C community, not a capital C. Community. Correct. And and then when they don't make it a public walkway. Oh, that you can't count. Right. You you get that argument going. Right. So yeah, private walks are not community benefit. Right, but they aren't just taking a chunk of money and saying, do with it what you want. All right, well, that has to change. There you go, policy. Yeah, policy has to change. And I'll just comment on this so you guys are aware of this. At least, and I don't know how it happened with Woodview, but Woodview has, as well as some of these other projects, have development agreements that ultimately do come back, as, as was mentioned by other people, to the board how or where they are constructed from and with whom in the township has never been really clear to me when I've looked at them. Um, but they're, they specifically outline what the money is to go towards. It's not to say that, um, especially for PUDs, that the Planning Commission couldn't recommend that the board adopts an ordinance to maybe require something to happen, you know, as a certain percentage or what have you. Okay, thanks, Ryan. Um, Rob, you have your hand up? Again, or is that left over from last time? Same thing. Uh, something the chief in his uh, description uh, sparked for me was that uh, the data that he has is time from HVA receiving the call to dispatch. And uh, what we need to highlight is that HVA, two things, HVA is a private company dispatching a public service and that there is an additional delay before HVA gets the call. The initial 911 goes to the sheriff and then there's some delay, maybe 30 seconds, maybe three minutes, depending, but there's some additional delay before HVA even gets it. Um, and that doesn't, it seems to me, sheriff and fire should be handled by 911. I don't understand why Sheriff is handled by 911, but fire and HVA are handled by HVA dispatch. That doesn't make sense, and that's obviously a bigger issue than Sio Township, but I, I do want to highlight that there is a, an additional delay there. Thank you. No more hands? No more hands. Okay. Um, we'll close public comment, move on to approval of the minutes. Anybody? Have any additions, changes, corrections for less meetings minutes? No. <coughs> All right. And, um, without objection, we'll approve the minutes and move on to communication and correspondence. Chief, anything? Nope. Uh, no business. Okay. <laughs> Mark, I think you had a couple of comments. <laughs> um, okay. Oh. We're going to now talk about the recommendations. Now, the chief put forward a draft recommendation, which we were all asked to comment on. And to my knowledge, there were only two commentors, Mark and Bob Hyde. Um, Bob, a couple of your comments were in a lot of it. Yeah, grammar and stuff like that. And, um, but, right, and some questions too. Mm. Well, I think that in. You want, to, you want me to start? Is that what you're saying? Um, well, I don't know that we need to go through. Right. I think you wanted to clarify. Our, but I guess the chief could do yeah. that when he's going through. He can, if there are things in there, you can go ahead. 
that are incorrect that I put in, ignore them. Um, if there are things in there that somebody else has made a comment about or you would like to see worded differently, that's fine too. Uh, I'm gonna just say that we talked about option 1.5 in one spot, but we didn't, we didn't spell out the cost of that. So that's why I put a short paragraph in under review of costs, just so that the board would know what that option was if they were seen. Okay. Um, of course, I didn't put the full numbers in there, Mark. And uh, the question I have on your comment, if I may, Bob, you know, I don't know that, uh, I said this too, but I think I was wrong. Option 1.5 says requires a purchase of a rescue vehicle. For that. Is that not, that's not true, is it? We have one. Right. But you would want a second one, I thought, and the second location. So it does require one. Oh, okay. See, that's what I was bringing that up for. Okay. So the difference is two, option two, moves the rescue. Yep. To pulls the, it forward. Pulls so it we down only to still only have one rescue forward. One rescue vehicle in option two. Correct. Option one, we have two rescue uh, one five we have two. Is that okay. correct? If, if, well, clarification: you will have physically have two vehicles, but you're pulling the expenditure forward to one point five. If you were to go directly, yeah, past yeah. two to three, then you, you already have two. Yeah, exactly. You just one point five as a standalone is really where it is. It isn't one plus one point five, which is different than the others. I think. Right. Right. I think is how we're doing it. One point five is a standalone. So we got to treat it as that. We don't do anything to this station. We right. build a substation somewhere or rent a substation. Well, somewhere. is that fully, true? Fully fund for staff. Right. Is that maybe I'm wrong? Yeah, fully staff piece of one and 1.5 are the same. Okay. Staffing are the same. Okay. Really, it's the lease and or buy, but I think we talked about leasing, short term lease. Mm -hmm. You would have. The lease facility, whatever capital improvements, you have the rescue unit, and all staffing, whether it's one, 1. 1.5, or two, is the same. Correct? I'm not sure. <laughs> In my mind, what you just said requires us to hire nine firefighters. Yeah. Well, whatever. Three for here for whatever. staff, yeah. and two for yeah. six for the substation. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I just want to make sure, uh, in my mind, I understand when you say full staffing, what that means. So, what I have in mind, mm -hmm. based on our conversation, correction, uh, option one was 12. Uh, yep. 18 for 1.5. Yep. And uh, 27 for 2. Which page are you on? We have 12 and 15. He's on, his, he's on his, uh, his presentation. Yeah, I know. Two is 24. Yes. Okay. Got it. Right. All right. So it's 12 and 12. Oh, this is 12 and 15. Gotcha. Okay. 24 is 24 total. All right. So 12 and 12. Yep. And option three is 33. Can I just check four is 45? You say, Mark, you say overall hires. Don't you mean overall staff, uh, overall? Firefighters, because you're not actually hiring 12 people, you're going right. to have 12 people, correct? Overall staff, yes. I'm just picking the words off that. that oh, okay, been, okay, all right. Yeah, you know, we, we've then that would be this. Yep. Oh, I just want to make sure we're not hiring 12 people. No, that's total staff. What I okay. those okay. numbers 12, 18, 24, 33, 45 total. Gotcha. Uh, response, that's what it, okay. Okay, so, um. You were finishing up your well. One last thing that I didn't put in my red line was the thought that well, we really need to. I think we need to communicate with the board that they can. They have to set the timeline. I mean, if they choose option three, like we're headed towards recommending it, maybe then when they put things on the timeline, will dictate when it gets done. Mm -hmm. But it's really, I mean, we're, we're putting out a, um, a description of when we think that things need to be started because of the duration of time. But it really it becomes flexible if, we, if the voters approve the overall project. The board needs to implement it as they see will get the job done 
when they wanted that. If they want to pull something forward, they could. If they it's just a matter they, of what they levy. Right. So I don't know how to put that in here, and I don't know if we need to put that in here, or if the board will understand it from what we're writing. I well, think that goes to the ballot language. I think re, I, go, I tried to read Mark's ballot language, and it took me two or three times. And I think I understand that that actually, the ballot language actually does exactly what you just said. Okay, as long as the board understands that, we're good. Well, the issue is, will the average Joe resident voter understand it? Um, we're going to have they to teach know what they're going to right. We're going to have to teach. Well, what do we tell them that they need to be involved so that they can influence the board? I mean, because that's their only involvement after they approve it. Well, we also talked about, and I apologize, I didn't draft this part up, the the enabling ordinance too. So, like, oh, okay. I, ideally, if we go to the board, we have proposed recommendation, proposed ballot language, enabling ordinance, um, and a recommended um, election date to aim for. I don't think we need, as a board member, I don't think we leave much over to the board. <laughs> no, Mark. Well, okay, I want to come to yours in a minute. So, yeah. Mitch has his hand up first. Oh, Mitch, I'm sorry, go ahead, Mitch. Thank you. Uh, I did send Chief Hood a uh, chart. Oh. I don't know if he shared it with many people. It's just the first draft, uh, you know, including the number of personnel, possible millages and uh, equipment, et cetera. Uh, I think in order to present this to the public, we really need a chart <laughs> because it's hard to understand. Um, and, and also, I think also in terms of option 1.5, um, it does in a sense build up on um, option one, like you said, because it, it has more personnel. So the two in, two out really is incorrect when it says this would satisfy two in, two out requirements 0% of the time. It would be the same as option one, which is not 0%. So I, I think it's, uh, I, I think that should be definitely revised because, you know, if someone sees two in, two out 0% of the time, they definitely won't support it. <laughs> but option one does, although it's not 100% of the time. So, but I, I definitely think we need a, a, uh, chart and in the chart I tried to do something with millages every year because um, we have to show that it's going to be perhaps an escalating millage where you start with options one and 1.5 or two and eventually get to three I think <laughs> or I don't know are people proposing that we start with op with three and just start with a very high millage right from the beginning so it gives money to build a new station etc I think we have to decide on what, what we want to propose to the public. If we give them too many options, it gets con very confusing. Go ahead. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah, Mitch um, or David? No, I, I had the same question Mitch had, but go ahead. Well, uh, that's where I was headed, Mitch, on my discussion about what's up to the board, what they want to pull forward. Um, if the voters approve a millage, uh, and know that it's not going to be necessarily drawn all at once. That doesn't tell them when it's going to be drawn. It, and, but the board needs to implement what, if they want to get started on the build as quickly as possible, they're going to have to either use other funds or this millage to, um, to begin as early as possible in order to get it done in the time frame that we're proposing. So I don't know what the right combination of, of steps is, whether it's better to start off medium and get a little bit of excess and then later on have to go up a little bit or down a little bit, depending on how fast the, uh, the township's tax base rises. I mean, it, it, there's variables. But I would think you really want to start off at base minimum and then have to and then, and then have to delay something because you didn't have enough funds on hand when, when you had to order the trucks, for instance, in order to get them to the new station in time. I don't know the timing, how it would work. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. And uh, a lot of the comments that, um, you know, from Rob Pattinson and, uh, and others, uh, are really extremely important because most people in South Township don't re realize 
the situation that we're in right now in terms of safety, equipment, funding, et cetera. So we really do need a big education <laughs> uh, drive. Um, and I, I think they will accept it once they're educated, but it's gonna be a lot of money for some people. Or, uh, you know, it's it's gonna depend, the millage is, and they may be hesitant to accept that, but I think they're gonna have to. Um, but that's when perhaps starting with a moderate, definitely not going at the highest right in the beginning would be better. Um, but as you said, starting low, we may never have enough money for a lot of things that we want. So. But I think part of our education process has to be to tell them at least what option three would entail and cost. Yep. And the fact that we're going to start out at either 1.5 or two, um, uh, and maybe two is too much. But, um, but I think we need to tell them it's going to be X in six or eight or nine years. Uh, initially, it'll be Y. And then as we go forward, it'll be Z and then X, whatever. Um, <clears throat> but there yeah, is I what, I, what I did with my chart is I actually had by date the millages and for option one, two, three. <laughs> um, and uh, I mean, we can project how, how much time it'll take for option one. But a lot of times you'd want option two to be occurring at the same time as option one as you're building the new station and things. So uh, anyway, it, it'd be interesting to put that into a chart form, perhaps, um, so people can understand it. Or Because when it's all in text, it's, it's, it gets a little confusing. Mitch, I apologize. I will get that uh, document out to the rest of the group today since we're going there. Okay. It's, it's just the first draft, and I might have made mistakes because I was trying to take numbers from the paragraphs that I read. And uh, as, as you saw just before, a lot of people get confused about even the number of personnel each one takes uh, requires. Thank you. And after reading Mark's um, comments, I think there's a, there's a timeline in there about the building of the station. It could be that we don't even get past um, option two for the next 10 years if it takes that long to build the station. Because I think completion of the station was 29 or? 27, or, right? Yeah. 27? As late as 27. As late as 27. It, it, it all depends on um, uh, the funding mechanism. Right. Mm -hmm. And how can't we start until we get the funding mechanism right. approved? Right. And if we're going to do an election in 24, then it's easily 27. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my 26 was. Uh, on 23. Based on. Uh, yeah. Are we. And, and, and potentially a little. Uh, Sorry. I mean, mm -hmm. building's not yeah. my area of expertise, and I, you know. It, even the experts right now in this particular day and age, material and labor, uh, you know, you should have a project done between 12 and 18 months. They're grabbing on to 24. Easy, mm -hmm. easy. Mm -hmm. right. you know, doing a renovation of a church right now, and the lighting controls, it's already yeah. on that 18 months. Mm -hmm. Just the lighting control. So, Bob, um, you're done, Mark? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bob, you're going to say something? Well, it looks like yes. Yeah, no, sure. right. Do we need to have something in here that sets up, that recommends to the board that we need to continue some sort of a education committee now instead of a recommendation to the board? committee. It's now uh, a public education committee. I heard talk about that, but we didn't put anything in here, and I keep forgetting to put it in my notes. But it's a good idea. So whether it's a subset of us staying on or new people, <coughs> I don't care. I mean, it just needs to be... Uh, when you say you people, who are you talking to? Um, the fire, fire station? New, no. Oh, new people. New, I'm sorry. I thought you said new, new uh, volunteers. I got you. I got to you. represent the township to the public. Or actually, it, it just, it's a guidance committee to the board again. Yeah, it's kind of a revised charge. Yeah. And maybe refreshed membership at this committee. Yeah. I mean, uh, that should would we make have sense. a statement I... in here telling the board that we think it needs to be done? Okay. We probably recommend uh, X number of people comprised of X number of 
I think we need firefighters on the on the mm -hmm. on the team, maybe a board member or two, maybe a couple of people ordinary who, residents who, who have done this kind of work before, that kind of work, you know. Yes. Um, people are experienced with PR. Yeah, yeah. Which wouldn't be me. I mean, that's not my experience, let me tell you. Yeah, and it would need to be education and not campaigning. Right. So exactly. Right. You can't campaign line. for it. Right. Can be part of it. Well, the trustees can. The elected Sorry. officials can't campaign. No. But the actual committee could if it was the right you know, the right type of people. Sure. But if it weren't, you know, on behalf of the township, sure. Well, I you know, there's a fine line between education and campaigning. Yep. And so you gotta watch that. And you gotta watch that, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because okay, so we'll look we'll, at a bridge we have to cross. Okay. Um okay, anything else, Bob? No. On yours? No. Um, I did have one question about yours. It was the very end, very last, very last comment you had. Um, this recommendation not include service delivery improvements as substantial building heights change. That was I think what you're talking statement. about. The that ladder was chief statement. Oh, that's chief. I was I was putting it in red to, to make oh. sure that we. I don't know what that was intended to talk about. Chief. I can <clears throat> elaborate. Um, that. Uh, build out of this plan um, has the township growing uh, as it exists today, you know, two to three story buildings. Uh, in, in my estimation, if uh, oh, the ladder truck that can handle less specific to a ladder truck, but okay. if there's a new planning commission and a new township board who decides that Jackson Road needs to be 12 stories all the way down, that's a different subject. What would the subject change? How would the how would the answer to that? Uh, if change? that was the case, I would be advocating for additional station. Oh, it's a, because yeah. of the concentration of population. Not Concentra the concentration of population I generally. I so yeah. if if it become a more dense, if if the township yeah. has a more dense area, we might need to push the third station up in time or a fourth. Or a fourth. Okay. Yes. But we're not even advocating for a third, just preparing Correct. for the potential. Yeah. So we would want to pull that forward. Yeah. With, my, with, my comments revolve somewhat around what we see in Arbor City doing with some of their new redevelopments, mm -hmm. which one is right down Jackson Road, you know, mm -hmm. Stadium and you know, Maple area. So can you take my <clears throat> question in that statement and elaborate a little bit? Yes. Okay. Make it more clear. Because I wasn't sure what it was, whether it was a new piece of equipment needed or gotcha. but now you're saying no, it's a whole new stadium. Potentially. I see why, because of the density. Yeah. You didn't use that word. Yeah. But in reality, this is 20, what, what year are we at? 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, still. Almost. We're talking about only, yeah, for now. But in reality, uh, eight, 10, 12 story building, got to be at least five to 10 years down the road, if at all. I would assume that it's a whole different planning commission, whole different board, and then there's the planning and the, and all the stuff. So that's not going to happen. This is that's out of our scope. That's, that's out of our scope. That's out of our scope. But yeah. it's something. I just want to planning long range. It. It's something right. we need to lay out right. on the table. It's based on based on current, you know, our assumptions are based on the current policies. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And if those policies change, these assumptions assumptions might change. Yes. Okay. Now I understand. Okay, Mr. Perry, you had one or two things to say about Chief's um, <laughs> recommendation. Well, as earlier stated, these comments are just nothing more than, than take it for what it's worth. If you accept it, you accept it. If you don't, if you don't. It's documented. If, if, Thank if you. I can interrupt you for a minute, I think many of your comments are based on the fact that we have statements that don't have any data to back them up. Is that true? Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. Mm -hmm. And I guess the question for the chief or the assistant chief or Lance would be, Lieutenant, Captain, Sergeant. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but the firefighter can tell us, the firefighter can tell us, is that data available? The data that Mark, Mark referenced. 
I mean, we can go individually specific. We, we don't have to go into it at all. It's just the comments there, and if we're going to use the content, the statement, we should, we should be prepared to support it. Okay, right. There should be something behind it. Okay. So. And, 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 and all the documents that were presented from meeting one through today, the data is probably there. It's just that I either forgot about it or I don't have time to go and sip through it. I'm just Me too. Yeah. Throw it off. All right. Um, <clears throat> beyond that, the, the comments and the next part is funny with the day normal traffic. Seven four nine five North Pine Field Drive. Oh, okay. and, 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 the, and the inserted, the, the newly inserted area is, is, is just built on discussions that we've had. Um, you know, whether it's whether it's with Rob or Bob or Dave or Chief or Lance or Doug said or Bob said, you know, I just put it in there. And um, uh, just creating a Not record for, I believe what we're saying, and boiling it down into North this document. And again, you can accept it or reject it. And, um, and, um, and the, the review of costs, you know, I have to apologize that I've been so busy with my paying day job that <laughs> <laughs> really? I haven't been able to update the, the uh, revenue and expense forecast based on last week's uh, meeting. Uh, but I did insert the table, the recap table. Mm -hmm. uh, folks wanted a summary and not all that all that other stuff. Um, the uh, committee recommendations, um, one that was uh, was uh, not in the original draft, uh, it, it addressed uh, 1.5. And I wanted, and that's my, my first, you know, going to page seven or the committee recommendation section, I inserted that new paragraph addressing 1.5. Um, the, um, the, the third paragraph, or the second new paragraph, um, goes into, um, is that the while there was healthy debate? That's what the, that's the second. Oh, okay. okay. So down one point five due to the one point five when we had that. So we're talking about due to the uncertainty. Uh, no, the, the, yeah, yeah. The next one up, the mm -hmm. one uh, we were oh healthy debate. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that's been absent from our entire discussions of gradually uh, evolving into transport. Is we talked about the need for the or the potential mm -hmm. need for the service mm -hmm. and the cost of personnel and cost of uh, capital outlay, but we didn't talk about the administrative infrastructure that needs to be put in place. Assuming we charge a user fee for the transport, mm -hmm. you're going to need to enhance your accounting staff, your bill, and, your payables and receivables. If not, you'd probably outsource it to an insurance uh, so, management company. Uh, I can address that one right up front. We want nothing to do with anything related to billing that has to be third party outsourced. Mm -hmm. Any mistake with Medicaid, Medicare billing, huge penalties. Or the township would have to do it. We are the township. Yeah. Yeah. No. It, it, it gets farmed out. Um, so all you guys do is check them. Check a box and put the paper. We don't even do that. Oh. These companies. What my point is, is that there is an additional fee mm -hmm. expense mm -hmm. that has to be charged to the township, to the taxpayers of Sile Township. And we haven't had a discussion of, of that piece of it at all. Hold on. If a third party does the billing, yeah. presumably the third party would add their cost for that billing onto the bill, not charge us. No, the, no. the way it works, um, if we've got a, and I'm making numbers up, if we've got a $450 BLS transport, they basically take a percentage. Mm -hmm. So we, we bill, we don't, when our report's complete, once a week they pull our reports right off our reporting system. Uh, they make sure it meets all the criteria for billing through uh, Medicare, Medicaid. If they don't, they kick it back for us to correct before it gets sent out. 
it gets sent off, and that four hundred and fifty dollar bill turns into a three hundred and thirty dollar check to go back to us once a month. They 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 do it on a monthly basis. So again, I I, I go back to the point of, of, of that comment is is that we haven't had a discussion on the administration uh, either by the township or by the um, uh, an outsourced uh, insurance management company. We just haven't had that discussion, right. and none of those numbers are built into this. Well, hold on a second, though. Either we're doing that today, you said. No. We oh, don't, we don't bill for anything. Oh, if it were to occur. Correct. If it were to occur. Yes. The third party just, without us doing anything. Correct. Or they just say, look at your reports. Okay, 10, 10 report, 10 whatever they are, these all qualify, submit them, and here's your check, fire, fire department. Yep, take their cut and give us the balance. So what we haven't taken into account is the income, yeah, not the work, because apparently there's no work involved on our zero. on our part. But zero. you're being paid yeah. for the work. Yes, there were being. <laughs> I mean, no, I mean, we're I'm paying sorry. for the work. I'm sorry. There's no administration. <laughs> there's no administrative work. We're paying for it. Like they're taking the cut, which yes. is fine. But overall, yeah. Overall, well, it's right now, positive. yeah, it's a net positive. Right now, we don't account for a four hundred fifty dollars medical. Loan. It's just the guys work. They get they get their salary. I mean, that's it. We don't. There's no extra income coming into us. Right. That. That's right. Yeah. This so, is a purely net positive to us. Right. Without any administrative costs. Without your Paul. Correct. Without getting into the weeds on the subject, it's something that has to be mm -hmm. uh, discussed and a little bit more. So we uh, know one point five. We would have to say there's additional income to the township based on this, that, and the other thing. Okay. Yes, yeah, it, it would could go in there. It, it would, if we were going for EMS, it could potentially reduce the tax burden on the services. Yes. Okay, but someone would have to handle the checks coming to us once a month. Acumed uh, was one of the companies. Our current provider, um, Image Trend, both work similarly. They do it on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, based on call volume, and it, it all comes in one check in every, every quarter or month. Is it a check or electronic transfer? Which I reset it up. Okay. So minimal, presumably minimal effect on the finance department, such as it is at some potential Paul. Is that correct? Yes. Would you would, would you say that's correct, Mark? I you can't. I, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Okay. Now, I, the, the closest thing that uh, that I've experienced to the theory of there will be administrative costs outside of what the fire department manages, like billables and payables for transport. The closest example that I can put out here, and we'll probably uh, fan the flames, <laughs> is when the township went to a single, a preferred single source waste haul. Mm -hmm. We decided that the original proposal, as you remember, mm -hmm. was uh, the township would handle the administrator. And then we realized, mm -hmm. or the township realized, that's a bad idea because you're, you're going to have to staff it with one or two additional FTEs. Right. Full time. So we said, heck with that, you know, GFL, you want this gig? you got to pay for all that stuff. Right. But as it turned out, they were doing... Uh, Two dollars and whatever cents uh, a month on your uh, your waste no, anyway. mm -hmm. for administration, mm -hmm. uh, and that didn't go to the township. That went to the homeowner, and so we got to be cognizant of mm -hmm. what we're doing to the what we're doing here. exactly, yeah. exactly. And we need to make it clear to the board what the options affect is before they make their decision. Yeah. So this discussion can happen. Um, and another no, no, it needs to go in the report. Yeah. Well, I also think you know the potential ordinance language could also establish a formal advisory committee to kind of take on these issues. You know, to to include this, in, you know, amongst other issues as we go forward over the next three years or something. I'm saying this is not an issue. Yeah. It, it's not. Okay. But it's just something to inform the board. Of. Yes. Absolutely. We have to, well, I think we have to inform the board that it's not an issue. Yes. Okay. Yeah, these are simple service contracts every EMS provider uses. And we already have 
in our ordinances already allows us to bill. It, that would need to be modified. Yeah. You want to reflect the current rates. Right, right. Reflect the... It's no yeah. big deal. We yeah. can do that. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just thought that you had... You, you, no. I'll let you go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Easy to go more quiet and pull your foot out. Too late. Too late. I'm glad we are so informal. Here. <laughs> All right. The next one, uh, the next observation is, is that uh, revenue and expense forecasting is very difficult, particularly in an inflationary time. Or deflation. Or deep, well, a fluctuation in right. the economy. Yeah. Right. And um, I added this next section uh, to one set up the notion that we ought to have um, a throttle and a governor on mm -hmm. that village rate mm -hmm. in the event that the economy. Uh, improves so much and that the tax base grows so much beyond what we're experiencing today and that village rate that it's going to throw off all kinds of cash mm -hmm. so you got to have that that throttle and that go and, and and that's what this section goes to where are you Oh, I'm the, the last one at the bottom of, uh, seven. seven and top of eight mm -hmm. but I think what you're saying is we build into this an ex a, a, a certain factor of money when we get um, accrued so much in the fund balance, we slow down the amount of tax we we can bring in. Is that what you're saying? Right. It, 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 it has a governor. You know, you can you can be, you can authorize the example that I gave you. You know, the residents can authorize say two mills. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when the growth of uh, the uncertainty of the growth of the tax base, that two mills could throw off way too much money, mm -hmm. way too much. So I tied the, um, the, the the throttle, if you will, or the governor, if you will, mm -hmm. to um, the number of months of cash reserve. So if the cash reserve, you know, if the current policy of the township is nine months, that's all we're going to have in cash reserve. Well, then you got to roll that millage rate back so that generates no more than nine months of cash reserve. And then there's an exception in there where, okay, let's just say that there's something that pops up out of the blue that the chief and staff they need more than nine months. Uh, uh, or the, the economy goes in the tank mm -hmm. and we have another recession like we did in um, you know 2006, 7, and 8, mm -hmm. where taxable value went like this, mm -hmm. um, then you may want to increase it to 10 months mm -hmm. so that, that you don't go in the red because it's real easy to burn off and create red ink mm -hmm. in a recessionary time. Mm -hmm. Real easy. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where I say you can bump the nine to twelve or a hundred percent of whatever yeah. you're operating. And just to be are. just to be clear, <clears throat> this would only really occur once a year. That prior to the administration or the levy of the millage, we have to look ahead and see it's going to generate two million dollars. We already have three in our fund balance. We're only allowed to have four, so we need to cut back our millage so we only generate one. Is that putting that's, it in layman's that's, terms? That's, that's, that's the essence of it. Okay. And, and could we do that only under PA 33 SAD, or could we do that, have the same governor and throttle and all of this with you know, uh, a millage? Because I would prefer That question a was asked me last week. And, yeah. and I wrote, I jotted it down. It's a okay. research. I have a couple and, of things on my to do list. And I, it's okay. <laughs> And it was like, well, you know, do I take care of my paying customers? Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to I have to tell you, today's millage, the 1.35, because fire department has to come to the board every year. When I was on the board, it was assumed that if we didn't need the 135, we we levy one two or one fifteen. Mm -hmm. um, but it seemed like every year, of course, we needed the one three five because it was under under levied in the first place. So but that's not 
in the ordinance, though. That's the assumption that the board will do the right thing. But that's, there's nothing governing it. That's the reason for the 10 year lookout forecast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the is we're, you know, based on certain assumptions, you know, 2%, you know, growth in the tax base, two, uh, 3% and operating it. You know, right. That's the purpose of that lookout, right? Is to see, okay, what does that number, have, what does that rate have to be in year one? to make sure that year one, you're in the black and you're not in the red. Mm -hmm. and, and then you set that high enough mm -hmm. and then forecast it out 10 years to see, okay, when do you reach nine months or when do you reach 12 months of cash? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think we can put some parameters in a ordinance. Like, you know, you don't want to legislate the entire forecast, but there's got to be some, you know, numbers right. that we have to look at some indicators that we have to consider each year mm -hmm. so that we can justify it. So uh, jumping ahead a bit, that's why you saw the throttle in the mm -hmm. governor language in the in the draft uh, yep. ballot initiative language. Okay. That's why it's there. So that it puts it, you know, it 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 mandates to the board of trustees, this is the way the game's going to play. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you put that language, which could be confusing to the uh, non-financially <coughs> brained person, um, the reason you put that into ballot language is because, as Bob said last week, ballot language cannot be changed. Ordinance language can be. So the, the difficultness, the difficultness, the difficulty here with this <laughs> is that <laughs> that ballot language, I think, spells out exactly what we think it should do. But I think it's going to be real hard for somebody to understand it. No, I, I understand. Right. I understand. And, and, and that goes to Jessica's point on uh, implementation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, pull out that detail and put it in the ordinance. Yeah. And, but that means we have to have the ordinance. Well, for no, people to read the, 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 the ballot language, I believe, has to have at least an indicator. Of the governor throttle, the process, yeah, the yes. governor throttle mechanism, and then you know you put all the detail in the implementation language. Yeah, that's good. All right, um, next one. I was glad that you said that it needs to start out high enough that you can. You won't ever go into the red as you go move forward and start having additional costs come in. You have to project out because if you don't start high enough, it avoids the debates of whether or not uh, the board of trustees has to take something out of the general fund yep. and loan it to the the fire fund. And I, no, we don't need to get into that. No. All right, um, the next one. Uh, what is this? Uh, Are we on page eight? Yeah. Uh, oh, study. Uh, the group wasn't wasn't charged, or it's outside of the scope of this committee to talk about ordinance updating. I mean, mm -hmm. the ordinance is probably totally um, inadequate to take the next generational upgrade in the fire. Mm -hmm. You know, not only funding but also service. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what that paragraph's all about. Uh, operating expenses. Oh, this next one, we early on, and we didn't really talk about it. Is is that we've been we've been we've talked about the the millage covering two purposes: operating and capital expenditure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can all lump it into one. Levy, or we can, and, and, and that one levy is variable. I mean, you could go up and down, not to exceed the maximum. It could be a roller coaster. Uh, the other thought is, is that we have a valid language of two questions: one on operating and splitting out, and one on capital. The capital millage rate, that's a straight line. We, we know what it is. 
the bond, whatever it is you borrow for capital, and it's a one-time capital expenditure. Um, that, that's a that's a flat uh, flat line uh, annual P and up principal and interest payment, and that's all it is. So, and, and most likely that number, that capital up millage rate would be a low number. I, I, it's I don't out over ten or twenty years. Yeah, I yeah I would recommend twenty years because if it can stand on its own, uh, take it out twenty years uh, or ten, whatever, and get that millage rate as low as possible, and it's fixed every year. It, it's predictable. Do we need to know what the cost of the building is going to be? The capital investment yeah. is going to be. Yeah, and that that millage rate is not going to really really be determined <laughs> until. We do some uh, until we have work. all all design, and I'm talking yeah. about architectural, structural, yep. uh, civil, mm -hmm. getting all that done. Mm -hmm. uh, then we'll know what that is. Um, uh, you know, right now we're just sort of you know based on our collective experience. All right, we're going to need eight million, ten million, or whatever. We're guessing, but mm -hmm. you don't know until design is finalized and the RFPs go out to the contractor. That's, That's when you're going to know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but on the operating side, the operating village levy, since you, 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 you've isolated bond for capital, you're operating, it, it puts all the uncertainty, um, all the variables in the operating expense side. And, um, you know, we, we have uh, some pretty good forecasting models, but we don't know what the real assumptions are. Mm -hmm. and that's 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 the big part here. Um, you know, we can say, you know, we've got known five percent payroll. We've got known, um, you know, your your fixed expenses like electric and whatever, uh, but you don't know what your variables are, and particularly on the tax based side because that's your revenue generate. So that's the reason for that paragraph. And it's a consideration. We can all do it in one millage or we can break it down into two smaller. And, and just, I don't know the pros and cons of doing two as opposed to one. Those that are mm -hmm. active in, in, in elections can mm -hmm. do a pretty good job for you. So just to get fine tuning on the, <clears throat> on the capital, we'll call it the capital millage, a bond, if you will. Would that, Chief, would that pot of money cover new trucks, new equipment, new tanks, all that stuff? Or is that in your operating expense? I guess it's how we design it, really. Okay. It, in, in all the forecasts, it's broken out. Okay. It's all broken So you could either include it in the variable or include it in the fixed, depending on how we want to go. Trouble is, the it's still variable. You don't know how much any of those things are going to cost until you order them. Well, and, and part of the, and if I could interrupt yeah, one second, um, we're, we're talking about bonding for 20 years for an asset that's uh, disposable in, uh, in 15. You're talking about the truck? In, in uh, air packs. Air pack. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's one example. Right. We, yeah, use, we have to we get rid of them after 15. Right. So it doesn't make sense to bond for 20 right. for 15 year. Uh, uh, okay. okay. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, well, the, the, well, I mean, that could easily be built into the operating. Put it all in one. Well, on the, operating, on the operating millage, you have a reserve for replacement of an asset. So, the, the 270 yep. a year and the 55 a year. Um, and so, in the operating side, you got a reserve for replacement where each year you're taking one tenth or one fifth or whatever of the, of the equipment that has to be replaced. And then you're in your reserve, you're going to have a buildup, notwithstanding the throttle of government, mm -hmm. you're going to have a buildup of cash uh, to replace those assets. But you're still stretching it out over 10 or 20 years. With the with the objective of getting that millage rate down as low as possible, mm -hmm. uh, and, and, but you know your interest on that twenty years is going to accrue too. So mm -hmm. I mean you got to look at that. So uh, the intent of this paragraph is to get to uh, start the debate on what question you're going to ask on funding, one or two mm -hmm. levels. Mm -hmm. 
if, if I could interject, it, it seems to me that if we had it under one village and we had the proper finance department, Sorry. We, could, we could handle the choices that have to be made. And we don't have that in place right now. I mean, those decisions have to be made and we can't make them. Make a recommendation, but can the board actually do it? Can the board, I'm sorry, do what? Can the board make those decisions as they're currently uh, staffed? No, I mean, I think we should make a recommendation on it. I think it's there's political strategy and then there's also kind of the funding. I mean, there's something appealing about doing it in two questions um, mm -hmm. to me. So Excuse me, Can you do one without the other? Yeah. Just before you leave, yeah. orange, these colors mean the green one is the highest turnout, yes. the red is the lowest turnout, yes. in between. Okay, yes. very good. Thank you. Do you have a recommendation? Did you put a recommendation in uh, here? I don't have a recommendation. I mean, there's so many variables. So um, I just wanted turnout. you all to really look at the, the, the actual dates. Um, and the so expected that you can... turnout, expected ratio of turnout. Yeah, yeah. One final question, Mark. If we had two ballot proposals, one of them got approved and the other one got rejected, right. does that screw up the one that got approved? I think it does. Night's home, nobody's home. That's right. Mm -hmm. Potentially, yeah. Or we've got a lot of people and no place to put them. So I don't see how we can split it without... It, that's a political discussion. I, mean, if you have, I think you can split them in activity after it's approved. You don't have to. Um, you you could finance it with a long term bond without it being a separate issue to the voters. As long as it got approved, the finance the, the financials can be handled okay. after. I think. So I guess what, what I'm, I'm not sure what you're asking, Bob. You know, I'm saying if, if, if you had two, two proposals and before the public and they only approve one of them, what's going to happen? I know, but what if you have one proposal that has two questions? No, that's two proposals. No, that's two proposals. Yeah. You can't you can't have one, I believe you can only have one question be a, in a ballot initiative. You can have multiple things in it, but it can't be separate questions. But once it's approved, if it's all approved in one, or if it's all if it's approved in two, um, you can you can choose the method that gets you the best results. But splitting it into two then allows it to only be half approved. Again, I, I I'm, I'm I'm indifferent. I'm just throwing it out on the table for discussion for for leadership. And I, but I think we need to at least advise leadership that there's um, there's two ways to look at this. Okay. So anyway, uh, the next one, potentially the last one, is one meeting we had uh, the discussion on public safety, and it was a short discussion. But I think that. It would be um, it would be less informative to the board of trustees, at least if we didn't put notice somewhere, in, either in a reference section in the back of the document or in the recommendation section uh, up front, and that has to do with, like I said, public safety. The bigger picture here is not just the fire. It's public safety in general. That's the big picture here. You got police, you provide police services, and you provide fire services. It may not be an appropriate question to ask right now of the public, but they should be aware that at some point in time, like we've been talking with the fire department, you know, we've we've outgrown the capacity that we have. We've got to widen the broad. The bandwidth. Same thing with police and fire relative to the general fund budget. You know, we let, we we pay a, a million four million five for police services, and that's about one mil. And we're a one mil general levy township. So at some point in time, that police contract is going to break the bank if it hasn't already. 
Um, or uh, we make the recommendation that someone looks at the, the board looks at this and apart from here uh, and, and address the issue mm -hmm. and address the issue. And, and I and I think we'd be remiss if we didn't at least spend a paragraph or a couple of sentences on that issue. Because uh, you know, I, I don't want overall public safety to bring the whole the whole general law township down, which combined with our environmental problems and our water and sewer problems, that this police contract is the end all that says we're now the upcoming charter township. Would it would it make sense to uh, <clears throat> cover this as a not as a footnote but as a separate paragraph and say something that uh, something like the summarizing here just brain brainstorming something like the board should look at at some time in the future putting a police mill or sheriff's millage on the on the ballot to because to so that we have a a police millage and a fire millage. I think they need to be separate. But in my opinion, they need to be separate. So there's two buckets of money, not one. Because when you get one bucket of money, you're robbing Peter to pay Paul. But I, I think we need to keep those buckets separate in my in my eye. Unless we have a public safety department. Then you can have a public well, I, village. Well, I don't think I don't think you. I think you can take care of the separation mm -hmm. uh, with uh, a single ballot language. And, and where I how you I think you can do it as I wrote right. it is is that you know a portion of the millage rate is for fire, fire protection, and then there's also a sentence or two in there about. Um, Sufficient millage to cover the contract of the, the, the fire department. So the fire or police or mm -hmm. the police department, the mm -hmm. police department. So um, you know we can get into the wordsmithing of how it works, or we can under thirty three we can have a standalone fire and a standalone police, mm -hmm. and the standalone police would be dedicated to nothing more than carrying out that contract and uh, rent-free mm -hmm. paying the operating expenses of that 1,800 square feet. Right, right. So, um, you know, I, I, my point, again, my point being is, is that we uh, not address the, 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 the potential problem evolving mm -hmm. uh, in, this, in this paper, but we advise them, you got to take care of it. Mm -hmm. You got to take care of this. So, yeah, I think advice is good. The issue and, and the reason I say you got to take care of this is, is that, you know, the fires have the public safety. The police is the other half of the public safety. This only takes care of half of the of public safety. And we as a committee and board of trustees would look foolish one, two, three, four, five years down the road saying, oh, you know, we got to use one, we got to use 33 again. We got to come back to you and use it again to pay for the, the police side of it. Um, somebody's going to, you know, it, 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 it's going to, it's going to blow up some point in time if it hasn't already. You know, I don't know enough about Are those negotiations going on right now. And it's not sure. much of a negotiation. Oh, <laughs> that's like, here's your three or four yeah. or five year contract. Yeah, well, that's a good. That's a good piece of it. If, mm -hmm. if yeah. the police contract is three, a fixed three or a fixed five, it's four, four, four years. Now you know you can forecast your revenue needs for that contracted amount. Um, you know, again, it could be standalone police, standalone fire, but it's going to happen sooner or later. Mm -hmm. uh, to your point, I think uh, basically the county has adopted, if you choose uh, to use county sheriff as patrol, this is what one officer costs. Okay. Here's your bill. How many officers do you want? Yep. Yep. And right now, I think the contract uh, includes eight, which I, I don't know how it breaks out. But. And it's about, as I recall, last time I was on the board, it's about 110000 a month. 
So a little over a million three or something. Was that about right, Chief? I want to say by the end of this contract, there's there was a two. Yeah, the total's two, but there's a grant that offsets part of it. Mm -hmm. So it's like one six. Three hundred, four hundred dollars. Something like that. That's yeah. not the ARPA, not the ARPA, but the some uh, sort of mental health grant. Oh, the mental health. Grant. Oh, that village. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so that's yeah, that's, that's helping a, offset some. Uh, Thirty-three cents. I think Thirty-five cents. Just my perspective here. I think. <laughs> From a citizen's perspective, looking at their tax bill, it's clear when it says this is how much I pay for fire, this is how much I pay for police. Mm -hmm. I think that makes it a lot easier. Sure. sure. All right. I, that's that's the high level of, of my uh, of my thoughts. Sorry for oh, and in, in the back of the paper, uh, I if you wanted to. I, I took, uh, I, I created some language for uh, a standalone fire protection village proposal, uh, a public safety uh, facility, that's the capital piece of it, and then language on um, public safety millage. This one might also be. How are you responding to a snowstorm activation 3419 at Daleview Drive? That's my house. <laughs> Potential fire department responding to a fire alarm. Three four one nine at Daleview Drive, across of Byington and the dead end. And caller advising through alarm company of a smoke detector activation in the basement. Kind of ten fifty one. All right, and then um, after the uh, the just. The stab is throwing out some uh, village language um, for discussion. I also added uh, uh, exhibit uh, cover sheets for um, the option one, one and a half, two, three, mm -hmm. and four. Your work, your work, though. Yeah, work papers. And then, of course, that would be in addition to your, your call incident report. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, guys, there you well, go. I, I appreciate all this work on the village language, and it really, I think, makes it um, very specific about what we can and can't do. Is there any way to make it simpler or easily understood? Sure. Okay. Because I know Jessica was referring to the fact that we could pull some of the governor out of this and put it in the ordinance. But like Bob said, we can change the ordinance and we can't change this. So this has to be ironclad as to what we as a township, as the board, as the fire department can do and can't do. But I I just, I'm afraid to go to the people with, with this, even though this is what we have to yeah. do. Yeah, but, but, but again, I, I'm i I'm open to any, I, I just wanted to capture the, yep. you know, the theory yep. and put it in for discussion. And if the leadership says, nah, we don't want to do that. Well, okay, fine. At least we created the record that we discussed it. Right, and it's up to the trustees to implement it the way they think. Exactly. exactly. Works best. And I mean, this can all be explained in our meetings, but we're only going to be able to get to 10, 15, 20% of the residents. And so I'm just real concerned that my, my perception is, and I may be wrong, Halfway through this, if the person gets lost, they're just going to say no. So um, that's my perception. Yeah. And I think that's a fair assessment. They absolutely need to have an ordinance to review, too. Yes. And it's going to be just as confusing to them in there, but if the explanation of the, you know, the language in the ballot proposal is, is concise and direct mm -hmm. enough, it, Half of them or more won't even look at the order. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Okay. There you go. Question to you, Chief. Yes. Are you going to be the one doing the incorporation of all the comments, including? I'll work with David to do so. Okay. Is it clear enough to you guys what this is all about? Yours are very clear. Yeah. Most of Mark's are very clear. <laughs> we may have to we may have to pull Mark in once or twice on some of his comments. But I think a lot of most of Mark's comments are fair about 
does the data justify the request? I think is what you're saying. Or if in fact this is real, how real, you know, what is the data that backs it up? And I think that's that's something the chief can pull out. Um, when I was going through this yesterday, you know, I, I was just reading the draft. That's reading, all yeah. I was doing. Mm -hmm. But then it struck me that there's a mission to the scope. And the scope is are those first four bullet points. And within the context of the bullet points, was this paper written clear enough that it addresses each and every one of those four bullet points? And I didn't I didn't read it within that context. I just said, well, okay, I'm just you know, redlining as I'm going along. Oh yeah, by the way, we talked about this, which is important, but it wasn't in here. So that's how the blue got in there. In my opinion, I think two, three, and four are answered by this. We haven't answered one. Because we still haven't, as a committee, I think, come down and said, what is our recommendation to the board? What what sh what should we tell the board what our opinion is to do? Um, um, and I don't know, I know I know Bob is a proponent of 1.5, but I think, and if we do 1.5, I think it's just a stepping stone to two. Um, you know, but uh, how long it takes to get to two, I guess is the question. Um, and whether or not we can even do 1.5 <clears throat> is the other question, and it requires space, it requires a building. And I think you, I think you kind of, Here's the list of available industrial properties oh, within, the, within within the township. Within the township, not within the southeast quadrant. Right. There's only one property in the in the southeast quadrant, and that's uh, the Smith Building and on Wagner uh, the H two my H my 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 H2. And when I was driving the, the property. <laughs> The ceiling heights in there are so damn low. Mm -hmm. They may have three or four thousand square feet, but how are you going to how are you going to efficiently operate uh, an EMS unit out of that building? And you're assuming the EMS unit is going to be one of the big trucks, not the rescue squad. We were just talking about a, an EMS unit standalone. Yeah, I think right? I think Bob's point was just an ambulance, right? Yeah, right. So you could have a normal garage, a normal height um, garage. How big is that? No, it's, 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 it's over 10 feet. Yeah. Oh, it's over 10 feet. Yeah, okay. All right. I don't know. Ceiling, <laughs> the last time I was in that building was when Bob, Mark and Linda had it all tore apart when they were converting it to the research, the collaboration mm -hmm. center. And 12 tops, maybe maybe 14 without the drop ceiling. But it's not the ceiling, it's the door. Well, yeah. I mean, well, you know, I, in, in theory, you could. In the 1.5 million I, I budgeted, I think it was 180, 190,000, 100 bucks a square foot for the 4,000 uh, mm -hmm. square feet of space. Mm -hmm. So it isn't available, really. Well, I, I I didn't go knock on their door, so I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, but, you know, just in, in looking at the least industrial or lease. Um, I found a few, but it's all over the township, principally along Jackson and Jackson Plaza and April. Um, and the rent ranged from uh, 12 to 13 bucks a square foot triple. And that's about $50,000 a year. Just for rent. Just for rent. Just for rent. Throw in another um, 265 for rescue unit, throw in 280 for um, uh, 265 <coughs> for improvements or 265 a month. Or what are you talking no, about? No, no, the capital side. The capital, okay. Yeah. Chief needs yep. a rescue unit. Yep. That's 265. But it's also two years away. 300 on that. Yeah. 300 grand by the time you get to two years away. Yeah. And the deliverable is what, uh, two years, one yes. year, one two year? Years. Yeah. So, and then um, you know the 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 operating cost of the bricks and mortar is is only like twenty thousand or something. And I say only. I mean twenty thousand is a lot of money. Don't get me wrong. But in the grand scheme of of 
uh, an operational or a functional department, um, that dollar amount is not a big number. When you say is that electric, water, sewer, insurance, you know, whatnot. just let you, just just think of it within the context that I'm a tenant and I'm going to open up a business. What are my what are my building operating costs? So now to my question, then I chose to defer. You said we ought to understand what Ann Arbor is doing before we. Oh, and that article on Friday night. night. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. that goes to Bob's point. I know this is <laughs> this, this is right to the issue. And so, what is Ann Arbor doing? Does anybody really know? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this has been in the works for quite some time. Uh, so, Ann Arbor downtown. Uh, staffs a ladder truck, uh, which can pump. And then they also staff a pickup truck with two people, which they use to respond to medical calls just in the downtown area. They are replacing that, that pickup truck with a transporting ambulance and licensing at licensing it at the basic life support transport level. Oh, so this is just buying a vehicle. Yes. This isn't changing they're, they're the doing structure. What we're, what, what we're doing, what we want to do. Yeah. Buy an ambulance and then staff. Them. Not yeah. really setting up a second, second no. operating. The article is kind of misleading. Yeah. The headline of it. Yeah, it's just replacing one vehicle with another with one market capability. Okay. It, it, an evolutionary upgrade from just EMS response to DLS transport. But, but eventually they could get to ALS too. Maybe. But you know, your question was, what effect will that have on us? Exactly. So I will say, um, with transporting, there's more time involved, which means there's going to be more instances where their ladder truck then leaves to respond to a medical call, and that downtown will be unavailable to us. In the event that they don't purchase multiple rescue units, they're buying one at this time. At this time, yeah. and I. <clears throat> if they were to go all in and decide that's the way they want to go, my expectation is they would have four to five throughout the city, not that they won't be concentrated in one area. So just thinking at it from not an operation and service side, thing, but from the business side, of things, what does that do to uh, HPA? Well, first of all, you got 300 plus thousand in the county. HVA services the county. Yep. All right. 90 or 100,000 or one third of HVA business could be diminished. Potential customer Could be what? Diminished. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be, you know, even though it's only one, one unit, it, it could be the, the calls of HVA into the city could be less. So that means and even though the customer pays for the HVA service, that means that HBA's revenue will be impacted. But the bright side of it is, is that if HBA has less calls in the city, that means it frees up bandwidth of HBA to the surrounding right. townships or to the count the, the balance of what you mean with a key holder on That's a positive thing, I think, for us. However, if potentially one third of the revenue goes down. Right. One third of their staff goes HVA, down. Uh, HVA's fixed costs don't go down. Mm -hmm. That means it, it, it shifts the cost of replacing the Ann Arbor revenue for, to satisfy the fixed costs to the rest of the township mm -hmm. or the rest of the county. I'm just looking at it yeah. from a high level. What are the cause and effects? So the 450 medical call goes to 550 or something like that. That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. potentially. Chief, you said that they were replacing one vehicle with another type of vehicle. So they're not really going on fewer medical calls. They're just using different vehicles to get there. And that vehicle will be licensed to transport. Right. The other one wasn't? Correct. The current one is not. So the pickup is not. Okay. They, they did a three-month trial with an HVA ambulance, basic life support transport, and determined it was in their best interest to purchase their own. And I can't, I, I don't know the calculus that went into that, uh, but my guess is with the, the frequency of transport and unavailability of HVA, yeah. that that makes sense for them. But see, they're already doing what you're saying. So it's not like HVA's 
workload is going to go. They weren't transporting. They weren't they, transporting. They, they did a three month trial. They were for three months. Correct. Mm -hmm. So did that have an effect on HVA's business? Bottom line, that's to your point. Yeah, we don't know. No, no we have no idea. We don't know. Enough to say yes. Well, in six <laughs> months, they asked. only did 26 transports. So they, they, they only did it when HVA was absolutely unavailable. Back when I was doing some financial consulting for the city, okay, there's, there's parameters. There was uh, the the so are they going to do that in the future? Or is it just going to go out of the and wait for HDA? Sure. Is it going to be HDA first? Uh, yeah, you have to wait. So we, we have a protocol. Have there's, 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 a, there's a protocol. There's a protocol. Is it ever yes. yes. Okay. A certain amount of time. 10 minutes for a critical patient, 20 minutes for a non critical. So they aren't going to go out any more often. Just because they're they're both they're both going to show up the the they're going to both sent. attempt to be sent yeah. whether HVA has enough rigs available or not. We, we, we HVA won't, we won't know. Priority for transfers. Yes, what's, like, what's likely to happen? Contract. They're, they're yeah. going to get the in, in, indigent, oh, you know, oh, yeah. patients that, from the homeless shelter or you know that are downtown kind of thing that the HVA doesn't really want to. HVA is going to not rush to those scenes and let them take them, but it does at least keep the ALS unit in service for a critical patient. So the point of that article, as I sent it to you guys, is that here's another dot out here, yep. unknown variable that, that at least we have, ought to be conscious of, you know. Um, and, um, but going back to what I started and then I stopped was, Back in, in um, a few short years back during the budgetary uh, process in the city, when I served as a financial consultant to them, um, there was a debate on a communication system. City wanted its own, and HBA said, well, you know, we got our own. It would be terribly inefficient if we had two systems. To handle calls and whatever else these communication modules do within their your fire department software, um, and as I understand it, um, the fire department got their own communication software module. So I don't know how long ago that is. All police, fire, EMS, road commission all operate on the same system today. That happened about. I'm guessing about five years ago. Probably if the radio consortium came into existence. Yeah. Or has it been longer? longer. It's been 15, probably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Jeez. Oh, yeah, you guys were just putting on the county or the state system first, right? Yeah, because we're on our second iteration yeah, of radios. Second. So, second village, whatever. Um, so, so anyway, the, the, I think the the article was timely to mm -hmm. begin with. And I yeah. think it was good. I said, Food for debate. Let me let me throw a, a little hand grenade just to attempt here. Um, where does HVA get all this money? Fees. Oh, okay. Fees. Period. Yeah, they don't love you tax. Okay. There, yeah, it's a non non profit it's a non profit organization. Fees and donations. Wait, does does the, does the county give them some money? Godly. Not that they I'm made, aware of. They, they, yeah, that a, bu a budget appropriation is something that the county. I, well, I have no the, the reason I ask is we're trying to solve a problem ourselves. What if we just take the money we're going to build station uh, 1.5 for and give it to HVA and say have a have a thing in our township all the time in, in a certain area? I mean, well, if there. we think the southeast corner is where it's needed. Have them park at um, MI, MI HQ. I think somebody mentioned that at one time. I think somebody did. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm sorry, Bob. I don't remember you saying actually funding HVA, but uh, if that's your idea, I think that's that's what maybe that's a step towards um, solving our problem. But I don't know what it would cost. Is it worth asking HVA? Can Ann Arbor, is, does Ann Arbor already do that? You mean fund HVA? Fund HVA to have a vehicle on in the city station in a particular place. Or do they just leave it up to HVA to rotate? That I don't know. 
because I know I've seen HVA ambulance and sitting here, Meyer. sitting in Meyer. Um, I'm sorry, Township Hall. Township Hall. I've seen them over at uh, Baker and Jackson. Coffee shop. So I mean, they're here, but I don't know if they're permanently here. They're here maybe because they just. Their their shift point. They have a dynamic system that looks at how many ambulances are are unused or available, and uh, in the county, and they have assigned points to keep them equidistant from. So during the day, they're actually moving people around oh, yeah. to cover empty yeah. spots. So if, so if we get a call here in Sino, they might move the neighbor from 94 State closer this way or move the Chelsea car closer this way. And so, like Chief Marshall was saying, it depends on how many units are available and then and then they, they coordinate. And, and if, if you, calls go out and they shift people. And if you talk to them, they, they can know. spend. 80% of their day just driving from one point to the next to the next, waiting for a call as they just get moved around. So does us paying for them to have a, a vehicle in South Township all the time, would they even do that? If they're constantly moving these people around to cover other spots? My guess is they would create a new point that's staffed all the time, but I don't know. I don't know if they have the resources to do that even and what happens when all the other cars go out they can't it would be probably be hard for them to not use that car as a as a backup to go cover somewhere yeah, well, else somebody in Arbor say to us having a separate contract that said do this for us well i mean if we're paying for the service i mean could it be no different than if we hired firefighters and put our own ambulance here and, and did it ourselves i mean we're we're kind of it's kind of the same thing. It's just who's providing the service. You know, are we paying ourselves to do it or are we paying somebody else to do it? So the concept is not, I don't think, controversial. It's part of the issue we're having right now is that the low HVA can't get the paramedics they need to provide the service. So we could say we're contracting for it, but all we're doing that is taking two or, you know, taking the staff away from the rest of the county so even if they could get in a situation to dedicate it, it it may it may not overall help the system. It may be a challenge for them to staff, and because a number of the paramedics are are looking and and deciding to go work for fire departments rather than work for strictly an ambulance service. Okay, so that was my next question: is how is it? How are we going to staff it? But if you're saying the EMTs are looking to be firefighters and EMTs, I mean, not not that it's easy. It's just, I think it's a little easier to hire in the fire department. A combined, than it is, a combined than it is just. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of what. Just anecdotally, there was an incident in Ann Arbor City at a marathon going on, and this was a news article. They had a marathon going on with a contracted ambulance for that marathon. Um, when Maple and Maple Miller area uh, received a call for a child with a gunshot wound to the head. Mm -hmm. um, and they ended up transporting that child in their battalion chief's vehicle. Um, and that contract the ambulance finally broke free, but they were uh, almost to the hospital, so they didn't intercept and just mm -hmm. continue the transport in their suburban. Mm -hmm. Without, without, without support and support. assistance. I mean, they had. One of their guys was uh, they threw a guy in the back with the kid, did what mm -hmm. they could. Right, right, right. You know, they had they had basic life support equipment, mm -hmm. and, and it, that's a surgical intervention. Nothing we're going to do in the field. Mm -hmm. I I think it would be uh, worthwhile to add uh, a sentence or two into one point five the setup language here that addresses addresses that um addresses which a potential for contract yeah, yeah yeah and um because it's a it's a it's a dot out there it's a point out there that you know it's going to be brought up right well the township outsources police why can't the township outsource to hva you know you can build a firehouse on wagner all but the transport piece of it, uh, you know, you'd have a garage, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, there's no reason why you couldn't outsource the, you know, the capital or the, you know, the engine or not the engine, but the rest of the unit and, uh, and staff it. Any equipment if it's necessary, but uh, I, you know, it, 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 
is a prudent, um, I obviously hate to come back to it, I think it's a prudent business decision that Bob's pointed out repeatedly to at least address it, put it in the paper that we get, even though, you know, and you may have to, um, you know, during one of your chief uh, luncheons, you talk to the, the HVA uh, CEO. Oh, and, I've got their account. I'll just reach out. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll just see if that's even a possibility for a guaranteed rate. Well, how is that different than what we're doing? We Today, we outsource our, our basic transport to HVA. So how is that different? We don't. Township doesn't. It's, it's it an just arrangement happens. between, like our garbage, it's an arrangement between the individual and oh, HVA. Okay, they so, get the bill, not the township. So you're saying yeah, and I think I think the, the, the concept here is we say to HVA, hey, we give you X amount of dollars per year. Can you guarantee me this this rig in this area when it's on a it, call in this township? You know, other than the personnel piece of the sheriff's contract, you know, the, the bricks and mortar piece of it uh, can be what it is that, that the township funds and, and HVC can continue on building the customer, not the township. So your payroll and capital is not in our millage rate. Right? It's in it's, it's not based on a user fee. Yeah. And we're and basically cost. paying some sort of guarantee to have someone here. And, and but I would hope they would offset whatever they would charge by whatever they recoup. You know, to some level because we would do that if we were providing the service. So we would be paying the expense but also recouping some of the revenue. So you could ask what kind of arrangement could be made yeah. for a fee right um you know the per year or whatever yeah right man right. it just seemed like they would re they might come up with a fee but then reduce it a little bit based on they know they're going to recoup some of that mm -hmm. for any you transport well, i mean they're recouping it anyways to do it mm -hmm. they're already getting it now so i don't know that that's a benefit to them to say yeah it's x amount of dollars but if we do these transports it'll be less because they're already getting that so in, discussion. In, yeah, in, in a similar to. in a similar business arrangement the township has with the sheriff department, to a lesser degree, we also have um, a similar structure with um, AATA. We give them twenty five grand, and they run their buses back. They provide their services to the township, and I, I, I you know, that's the simplistic way I envision it to work. The only thing the difference is, is that, you know, we build a player house over on Wagner and, and you have uh, HVAC uh, uh, commit to uh, uh, stationing a unit there and servicing the township. Uh, and, and we pay for the space, like we pay for the sheriff's space. You know, we're getting circular here, yep. but, yep. you know, I, I just think we need the discussion. You know, and, that, and that article, I think, well, it fueled it. Well, why I deferred to the end <laughs> so you can get through your paper right up. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, okay. Where are we? I think you need another draft. Yeah. 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 Um, and how come? Can we just briefly? I mean, yes. Yeah. I was Jessica just saying, gave us this yeah, right. as a template. To, can I say before you start that if you do another draft and we have another meeting review like this, it might put off beyond when the board wanted to have their October, I mean, January 13th or January I think it was January 17th, 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 but they wanted it. I, I, we need to get the deliverables to them before Christmas. Yeah. We can, I, I don't see why we can't wrap the paper up. Mm -hmm. Before, you know, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know why we can't. Okay. I don't know why we can't have a draft. You know, have this cleaned up and um, get it out before next Wednesday, and mm -hmm. and we can just put it to bed Wednesday. Next Wednesday. Um, one thought related to this, just a question: Do we want? Um, I tried to keep this as short as I could, and clearly your comments are making it even longer. Is there? a value in doing a one-page summary before it gets into the report yes just, exactly whatever you want yeah exactly. whatever you want whatever you want okay fine. basically when you read this this is what you'll be told yeah, yeah exactly yeah. but i also here's our recommendation and here's the discussion on that recommendation but i also uh, heard you say we're now talking about about 
proposal in 2024, not 2023. No. Well, we haven't had that discussion right okay. now. All right. These are 2024, it takes three, four years to get to, right. to get to the right. So in Jessica's summary chart here, I see a four and a couple of fives in terms of the amount of voters that turn out. And the higher the number, the more? Or yep, the higher the number, okay. the more. Right. That's why she's color-coded it, too. Right. So there's two greens and a yellow. Another way to look at it. In, in other words, if we are shooting for the most participation of the public, given next year, then that's two years. 24. Two years. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, and if we're shooting for the middle of the road, I guess there's there's one orange. No, there's, what about the yellow? Well, well that's still twenty. That's twenty four. Um, so let me offer you this. If oh no, it's too late. I'm not, I apologize. But there's a you know there's a three in there. That's in next November. Right. I was going to suggest February 13th might be appropriate, but it won't because tax bill will be sent out already. If, if we hope oh, to 24. Yeah. If we hope to raise any revenue to do anything That's next right fiscal right. year, we'd have to do November 7th. 23. Yeah. Yeah. That can be put on the December tax bill. Right. 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 And I, you know, I understand her, her coding here. And um, the reason why the 2023 is it's an off year election. Mm -hmm. Nobody, nobody's being elected. You know, there's no state, local, county, nothing. There's only ballot proposals or uh, special if somebody resigns, we have to elect somebody and replace somebody. Right. So, in other words, if these are normal turnouts, if we had an education committee that did their job, mm -hmm. we might get a little bit more involved in the township. Yes, and that, that it might be more like um, the yellow one. Might be. Might be. We might be able to bump that up a little bit if we if if the job were done right. Right. And so that would be a lot of work. And the issue, of course, would be a lot of work in the summer and early fall. But of course, that's when everyone's on vacation. So. Still read mail. Hmm? They, they still read. True. Right. Right. So this would definitely, we'd need to form a committee, nonprofit committee, raise money to produce mailers, send out documents, and um, and I don't know that it costs anything to, to rent the space at WISB. Do you know if we have to pay WISB to rent their room for me? Yeah, I don't believe we do. Okay. So I think we're actually getting away from polo fields because we're charging them. Uh, because I know we've had, as a township, we've had a couple of meetings at WISD when we had a visioning sessions for like the paths and pathways and parks and things like that that were conducted by uh, one of our uh, planners. But um, but I don't know because I'm not on the board. I don't know if we have to pay for that space. So, but that's a big room, and we can have quarterly meetings there where we have neighborhoods come in and talk to us. Uh, but that would mean, or we can talk to them. But that would mean again mailing out invitations, cards, whatever. Um, so I guess if we're going to do this, the first thing we have to do is form a, a nonprofit to raise this money. We is not headlined or labeled by this committee. We as somebody, we as a, it's the editorial we. Right. Right. Being subject matter experts is one thing, but being advocators is a completely. Oh, different that's what I said. I'm not qualified. Absolutely. No. And I, you know, I, I don't know how to raise money. I don't know how to, how to form a committee. So it, 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 I'm using the royal we. It's the <laughs> trustees have to set this in motion. They then have to step back. Yes, they have to approve whatever. Well, a one of the options. Um, well, so that we can move forward with it. Yeah. So yeah. that it can be moved forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I may, while, I'm, while we're on this particular yep. topic, yep. Um, I want to remind everybody what I said in the opening at the very first meeting, my opening comments, is, is that uh, I currently serve uh, the Board of Review in judgment of the tax base. 
And I want to make sure that there's a, a, a bright line between being um, somebody that sits in judgment on individuals' tax bills or tax base and being part of uh, the, the, the recommendation of a village. Because now I've crossed the line. I can't sit in judgment of value and then advocate for a millage rate. That's conflict of interest. You won't be on that committee. I won't be on that So you can't be part of the education process. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be a subject matter expert on revenue forecasting, tax based forecasting, but that's about as far as I can go. Okay. All right. That's smart. In my opinion, better safe than sorry. Yeah. Now, what about the fire department? Can they advocate for their milk? Their own milk? I think all we can do is educate. Uh, I will say the firefighters union could do something. They can advocate. But it can't be at taxpayer expense or in uniform and stuff like that. Could the union fund some part of this education process? Do you think? That had to be a discussion and a vote amongst amongst us. Good. It's but, but yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. A lot of times unions will buy signs or buy signs or support candidates or so on and so forth. But okay. Yeah. yeah it, so if we came to you and said we need it's doable and then and then legally yes, and then it'd be uh okay. Uh, how much of whether or not the union guys want to do it. Yeah. Yep. Well, would it come out of their pocket or would it come out? Well, eventually I guess it comes out of your pocket, but wouldn't it come out of the union dues? Dues? Yeah, oh yeah, it would come out of dues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Of our, so won't of our pocket. Their cost. I, I believe there is also, I think your state union has a a millage advocacy fund okay. that you can tap into and okay. get some money towards a, a millage question. Okay. What about the DDA? What about the DDA? Can they? Um, I mean, they represent the businesses along the road. I think it'd be a good group to get in front of. Yeah. Well, you mean to educate them or? Yes. I was going after donations. Can they legally? Donate money. Are they separate enough from the township? Their money comes from their money comes from taxes. It does. Huh? It does come from taxes. Right. I don't know. That's a legal question. I think perhaps wasn't it like the Western Washington Business Association? Oh, there's that. Mm -hmm. There's those. There's that. That's it's just separate. separate. That's, yeah. yeah, that's separate. That's separate. That would be, so I think there's there some. There's somewhat in the township, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So those are the kind of places maybe mm -hmm. start. Yeah. I'm looking for who would give a significant amount of money that would you know, help us along. All right. This, and I don't know that we need to put the cart anywhere any much further in front of the horse, but um, it was just something to, to think of because if we're going to do November 2023, and the board is going to do something. If, if we're going to present to the board on the 17th, presumably they will not vote on it. Although this board, we never know. Presumably they won't vote on it on the 17th, but perhaps they'll vote it on, on the first meeting of February. Um, if even that, maybe the second meeting of February. So let's assume we get the go ahead and we can start something in March. You know, basically that gives us what, seven months. And so, okay, it gives the township, I have to say, the, the organizers seven months to get this thing going and done. All right, I'm just, I, I think we, I personally think we should shoot for the November 2023 of this year. So we are next year, which means we have to have ballot language by the place of 15th. Yeah, that's it. We already have a big jump on our ballot language. Let me go just briefly. I was just thinking here. Um, <clears throat> I've seen ballot language where where there's provisions of what you can and cannot use that money for within within the ballot language itself, the question mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. And to simplify the question, mm -hmm. they bullet point each of those provisions so that they, you know, to me, 
I can clearly understand and quickly understand a bullet point than I can a paragraph. And this is a, probably a Jessica question, mm -hmm. is, is that should we bullet point some of the, the nuances of, of whichever language you choose? I think that'd be real important, especially if we go with a combined village to uh, operation and uh, capital. You know, like, just go back to your executive summary at the beginning, and if you put in an executive summary, it could be put in very concise language. That's what you want. So this is, if I'm picking up on what you're saying, right? You're saying in our report, you want to make sure it's. No, no, no talking I'm talking about, about when oh, to the Joe and Harry six pack are standing at Washington <laughs> Intermediate School, and, 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 with and they're coloring in their little box. Yes or no? <laughs> is it easier for them to read a bullet point in the than the Oh, exactly. absolutely, absolutely. In the back. But, but I would say that also goes to the executive. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's twice now. You keep it simple. <laughs> and then you're the guy that wrote all those paragraphs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's a sentence. I mean, you got to get a real record for that sentence. It's it's a uh, it's a pretty good sentence. Um, all right. So, are we about done for the day? Is there anything else we need to talk about? Um. Uh, you know, oh, yes, you know, one thing that we that you know the, the, the paper leads to the end is a recommendation. Right. Um, is it three? You know, we haven't we haven't really said is it three? Is it two? Is it one point five? No, we just haven't said it. Um, and I think it would help the team when he boils this all down. To the final last draft. I'd agree. Is it one, one, one and a half, two, three? Well, I think, and Bob, correct me if I'm wrong, 1.5 is really a step. It's not a permanent solution. So, um, but it was a trial. It was to see what the result was, I thought. <laughs> well, it could be a trial. Or do you want to go for more? If the trial is positive, you're going to maintain it, correct? Right. So, right. Whether it be trial or not, to me it's moot, right? Because yep. if it works, you implement it. And you keep doing that without doing others, is what I'm getting no. at. You're trying that. No, I didn't say you don't do others. If it works, if it works, you maintain it. Yeah. And then you progress. So the, the point being, if we implement 1.5, we still have to think about two. You gotta, you gotta go expand the fire capacity. Yeah, we have to expand the fire capacity. Right. And if we're gonna do two, the question is, do we do three? Um, and how soon, or, or the question is, how soon do we need to do three if, if in fact we need it? Um, and does two satisfy us for 10 years? This is the question. Um, and uh, I don't know how to answer that. But one of the points that I made to you early on is I think we should just be looking at about a five year time frame. 10 years is way too far to forecast. And I think another maybe three years ahead of the five year, you get back together. You say, okay, we've done this much. We're okay for five years, let's say. Where are the next five years? Of I mean, who knows what's going to happen in 10 years? But the issue, Bob, is that. Um, it probably takes five years to get to if we're going to get there. And if we don't do anything, if we only do one five, which is actually one and one five, because we have to step up the and two. Huh? And two. We're talking about doing two. Okay, so we are talking about doing two. Yes. Okay, okay, all right. Okay. So that, that's the benefit of, of breaking the millage up into two pieces. Yes. That's a fair point. I didn't understand what, but that helped clarify it. Doing 1.5 might help, say, as our final goal, two or two or three. That 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 help clarify. Well, well when you say final, that you, you got to put the time frame. It, yeah, final. five five and, year and goal. We're, we're differing here because they're saying ten years, and I'm saying I think ten years is too long. Ten years might be three. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Five years might, might be two. Yep. But I'm saying then we go back in in three years, reevaluate and reevaluate option three. 
You're talking 10 stories and all this. I mean, to me, that's just nonsense talk, really. The SIA will really want to put up skyscrapers. Where is all the people going to come from? They're not all moving out of Ann Arbor well, or Detroit. Come on. Uh, you know, let, let, let's be real here. I threw that out just as a hypothetical. But let me ask, as a devil's advocate here, Bob, how can we realistically do 1.5 without the physical space to house them? And according to well, that's the leap, the short-term leaps. Well, that's it. But you said there's no space to. Well, I understand. Okay, okay, okay. Well, but that's that's your look. See, it's not. Yeah. See, to me, what we got to do is develop a concept that we think makes sense for the community. Then you have to have a tactical approach to implement. And if it can't be done, well, we still have this too, where we're looking eight years away to build a firehouse anyway. Yeah, two, two maybe five years up. Okay, that's if we yeah. start right away. Right? Yes. Right. Yeah. yes. So we'd have to start both 1.5 and the building process simultaneously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I want you to say that once you publicize wanting to look at a, a 1.5, that someone in the community had come forward and say, I know exactly where you can put this. Someone like, raise your hand. Like Ryan was talking about his his shop. Mm -hmm. there might be another Ryan out there. Mm -hmm. right. But if, if that helps resolve some of the issues we're seeing, then it's the right thing to do for the community. And in the end, it will improve your metric because you'll be responding to. Well, if it, if if we, do it, time will go down. if we do it, our response time goes down. Yes. But if HVA does it, in the aggregate, your response time goes down anyway because they'll be responding to the calls that you wouldn't be responding to. That's the question I was going to ask. Do we get... No, no we don't get credit for HVA. No, but if if, H, if we know HVA is going, do we go? Based on the calls, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that would affect our, our still affect our response rate. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't go on different calls. We continue to go on the same calls. Okay. It's just uh, if HVA gets there and doesn't meet our systems, they may cancel us. Okay. But you'd still have to record your time. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm. Sure, I'm so it doesn't help. I understand. It yeah. helps the people. Yeah. Yeah. The metrics no. The metrics no. I. But the people yes. I'm. Um. I don't know, Chief. I don't know how we can do this. Um, well, I guess do we propose two, but an intermediate step of 1.5? No, we leave. Okay. I see us putting enough information in front of the trustees that we say we should go for option two, option three, whatever we decide, mm -hmm. with an intermediate step of one. Say we go for three. Mm -hmm. We got to do one and two to get to three, or we do 1.5 and two to get to. A 1.5 includes one. Yeah. So we so it's a matter of do you do you implement one only and then two only and then three, or do you do one and 1.5, two and three? Because there's more costs involved in going right to 1.5, right? Than there is in skipping some of that stuff. Mm -hmm. So Here's Overall cost for three would go up if you're doing 1.5. Is that correct? And we didn't include that. Yeah, we're, pay, we're paying rent. We're but by we're the time you get to three, you're not paying rent anymore because we've, we've eliminated yeah. that. Yeah, but you temporarily. Are. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. So there's some additional cost if you want to go for. What if we maybe there's some additional cost? It, it depends on what we find. What if, What if we go using Bob's example? We go with a five-year plan. And the most we can do, I think the absolute most we can do in five years is two. And that's even a stretch. And then in three years, the boardship, the boardship, the township, the board puts together another group of people similar to this and say, okay, figure out what the next five years is. And, you know, so maybe we propose a five year plan with the end goal being um, option two. And the intermediate step is um, option. Um, well, certainly we have to do option one. We have to hire three more guys. Um, 
but the intermediate step being 1.5, and we should start looking for space immediately um, and use the capital we have that uh, million dollar uh, grant that we have for the American Recovery Act. Oh, ARPA funds, part one, six, one, eight. Yeah, and use, I don't know if we want to use that for uh, uh, modifying space for 1.5 or if we want to use that to fund the architectural costs of two, you know, but. That's your decision or the board's decision, not the board's ours. But, huh? It's the board's, you know. Yeah. How sharp does our pencil have to be to only have a five year plan to get all the funding involved to get a station built instead? I mean, we're already saying we aren't going to really know what our cost can we cover our costs if we only are talking planning for five years? <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, a pencil of, and forecasting is at best a number. Yeah. Stop, hold on, hold on a second, Mark. It's a five year plan, but it would be a 10 year millage for the for the build out cost. Well, or 20 years. It could be 10 or it could be 20. But the plan, but the plan, the operating oh, I see what you're saying. could be five. It's not the funding or three or whatever, but it has to all be done in five years. Yeah. It's here's what we want to do for the first five years, but this is going to cost this much. So the, the millage. Yeah, or the, well, really, then we're just making a recommendation one, two, three, one and a half, whatever, and telling the board to, to meet again in five, in three years to go be, to, to reassess. Right. So that's really all we're saying by it being a five year plan is that we've got to, we've got to have another one of these boards three years from now. Yeah, mm -hmm. got to do it. Mm -hmm. I think they got to do it. I think that's a good point. They got to do it anyway because mm -hmm. they are going to need guidance. They being the future board, who isn't going to know anything about what went on because they're going to be different people. Presumably, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. We're going to believe that there's going to be a turnover, some changeover is typical. Yeah. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's a re-education process, and we've got to have in place the recommendation to meet again. Yeah, I love. Oh, I like that. It may not be a five-year plan. It might still be a, a 10 or 20-year plan, but we're looking at it three again. years in and fine-tuning it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'd caution. Um, Here it comes, Drew. Here it comes. <laughs> is to not go back to the well. What well are we dipping from? The, the millage well. Oh, yeah. yeah this has got to be yeah. a long term. You know, going back three years, then five years or 10 years, you're repeatedly going back where real thin, real quick. No, I think that's why we recommend that, three. That's why I suggest a 10 year plan. Me again, to help recommend how to implement that. Maybe they don't have staff, financial staff hired in three years, but it's a possibility. And so they aren't really planning that far ahead. Did I say that on the record? <laughs> Speak a little louder. Yeah. <laughs> but not necessarily going back to the well, just how to implement the finances that are being so, brought in. So what you're saying is what is the need? Propose the millage rate that we would need to either fund completely fund two or three, however far we want to go yep. in 10 years. Yeah. But with the throttle of the governor. Yeah. With the yeah. throttle of the governor. Yeah. In five but years, do we five in three years, or do we not? But in three years, come back together again and say, how are we doing? See, how is our throttle working? How yeah. is the yeah. throttle working? Really, that's what it, you yeah. could evaluate. Right. Did our needs change? Did our did our income change? Can we revise how we're governing this? We can't because the governor is built into the, into the ballot proposal. No, it's flexible. Are you leaving this... Some choice of the uh, trustees to change whether it's going to be a you, you levy your maximum mm -hmm. each year. The trustees have to authorize the oh, ensuing okay. year's millage. You approve right. the maximum and levy what you need. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. And and you and your throttle and governor aren't necessarily fixed by the number of months of capital you want to keep in hand, the trustees could vary that number of months that they wanted. 
Well, as it's written right now, it's either you get nine or you get 100% of annual operating expenses, which means 12 months. Yeah. But for cause, you can deviate from nine to 12 there you or 100%. Go. There you go. So, I mean, and, what, and I don't know what cause means. And that's what the, the yeah. recommendation of the future committee might cause would mean a 12 story hotel on, on Jackson. Might help decide what to do. Or and fire truck board from commingling the fire money and all the other money. Absolutely, that's what the ballot language does. Right. Yeah. 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 Good point. You define, yeah. you define or earmark what you can use that levy for, and you can only use it for that purpose. That's why when you have um, uh, 1.5 million to the fire fund, and then each year out of the fire fund, 70,000 or 75,000 to the general fund. You can't do that. That's commingling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And well, it's being used for I'm not an expert. I'm not a subject matter expert on that point, but as I understand the way it works. Lots of ways that the part of the I don't I, I don't know what <coughs> park social tap fund. Didn't they do that with the parks fund or the tap fund? Or? Uh well the tap doesn't have a separate uh, have a separate village. What we what the board did, what I advocated for was something we couldn't do, and that's take money out of the road village and move it to tap. Um and we found out that that's not legal, and so we had to move it back. Or I don't know if it was ever moved, but because the Road Millage was an SAD, which spelled out 29 specific projects that had to be done, mm -hmm. which did not include pathways or, or mm -hmm. um, we could not move that money. We should not have moved that money to tap. So we yeah. need to spell out what, what, what the road SAD should have been, a road millage, not an SAD. That, that's why yeah. in the in the draft language, the ballot language, mm -hmm. you see it, it, it goes on because it specifically says what you can use it for and anything outside of that, but it's specific designation or identification, you know, can't use it. That ought to be some of the bullet points on this card we hand out to the, or that it's handed out to the public. Mm -hmm. yep. this, is, this is what this is fine. you're approving and this is what it can be used for. And only well, that card might be a bit slow. Yeah, <laughs> that would be the education, education sessions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To invite the public. Yeah. Different communities yeah. up to educate them. Yeah. Well, that's four and one. All right. We're coming up, I think, to the, a hard, not a hard stop, to a time we should call this. Chief, do you have enough? Yes, I think so. I'll, I'll work with you this week. To, okay. All right. Get this All right. And I will stop by and we can work on it. Um, Oh, yeah, I was just going to say, where's our gym? Where are we? In the I don't think we have any new business. So I guess we're to public comment. Anybody in the room want to talk? Oh, hey, you're here. Uh, good morning. It's still morning, I think. Yeah. Um, great conversations. Um, I would like to see this group get a little bit more education on HVA and the health and where it's going in the next two years. I think that that could. Um, help you to make some decisions. Um, I see in what little research I've done around the state is certainly more fire departments are trying to be all inclusive and just what's going on with Ann Arbor right now um, and HVA having all their problems. I think before we put any eggs in an HVA basket, you guys need to have more information. Thank you. Good point. Um, Everybody yes, Jillian. Jillian, you could go ahead. Yep. Hi, thank you. Um, a couple of things regarding um, you're talking about the five or 10 year millage, the timing of it. I would suggest looking at, of course, the election cycle. If I remember correctly, when the 2020 board came in, there were some big decisions that they had to make. And you know, th that board, a lot of them were new. They didn't know the nuances. So you may want to schedule um, the renewal of the the ballot or whatever um, and the second or third year of a, um, a four-year cycle. 
it's just, or, and you, and, you know, and, and if there's, um, you know, at the fourth year cycle or at the end of the fourth year, you know, they're, of course, they, they could be reelected, but if they're not, then they're making decisions for the next four years. So just the observation. Um, I don't know how you would, if it would be, an, um, if you have 2023, you know, four years from that would be in the middle or whatever. But um, another thing, oh, regarding campaigning, I have taken a lot of campaign finance classes and they've covered a lot of what you had talked about. So as far as an official um, on any on any board or commission or committee, if you're in a committee, you cannot talk or promote um, a, um, a millage or even a, another candidate. You cannot use anything in office. But on your own, when you're out talking to your friends, um, you can do that. So you have to kind of be careful a little bit with that. Um, and I, Mark, I agree with you. You should... Um, probably recuse yourself <laughs> because of your unusual position. Um, let's see. Oh, regarding combining the fire and sheriff um, millage or s special assessment um, under public Act 33, I'm not very comfortable with that simply because of the, um, the sheriff is a contract and the fire department SIO owns. Now, I would also, I would like to have the firefighters input on this, if they have any education with that. And I, I think that maybe you have um, touched on it, but even um, Assistant um, Chief Armstrong and Chief Hood, and also any other communities that do that um, with, you know, without owning their own sheriff or police department. Uh, let's see, campaign, there was one other Well, maybe that's it. Uh, um, yeah, and again, I appreciate all your, oh, one other thing. <laughs> no, I, I know what it was. So um, somebody brought up like, well, what if they went down oh, Jackson Road and put in 12-story buildings or whatever? And somebody said, well, that's not realistic. But actually, if you look at some of the things that Ann Arbor has been doing, and it's not an immediate type thing, you know, the decisions unfold and they build upon each other. Um, and you'll get, you may get some elected officials that have a certain agenda. That's, that's all they want is 12 story buildings and it could happen. So really that is, there's always that potential. Of course, it's not going to happen with this board and who knows about the next board. So yeah, it's, um, it's a little different thinking. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, thank you so much again for everything that all of you do and your, your commitment and your insights. Have a good day. Oh, secondary. Um, Jillian. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Go away. Um, you said something about committee members cannot campaign? Yeah, so if you're in a committee, you know, you're sitting in your committee meeting and you're talking about a millage, it doesn't matter what the millage is, um, you cannot promote that within the town, in your government or your official government position. Well, okay, so we cannot go to in front of the public as I am the, in my case, I am the chair of the fire committee and I want you to vote for this. I can't say that. Right, but you can educate them. Now, if it was your your friends and family, then you could say, yeah, I really, I, I'm really against this millage or I'm really for this millage. That's something different, but you you cannot promote one way or another. You can't be for or against something. Within now, if, it's, if you're, if you're, um, there's something about can candidates or something different. If you're, you, you would have to promote right. both candidates or all four, but as far as, yeah. All now, right. as I said, as an individual, because it's your first amendment, right. You can promote yeah. whomever, but you cannot do it in a, in an official capacity. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Hold on a second. Uh, okay. Terry, Mark. Julian, this is Mark. Yes. Um, Last week, you had um, asked for uh, a little bit of research on deductibility uh, mm -hmm. or claim as a deduction on your uh, income tax uh, special assessment district. And I researched it and I forwarded all the information to, to Dave for distribution. Uh, so I, I just wanted to let you know that I expect something from Dave. Yep. 
I, uh, yeah, I just got it this morning, so I'll, <clears throat> I'll forward it out. Um, do you plan on having another meeting? Next week. Next week. Okay. Could you include that information in the packet? Sure. sure. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, Terry. Next is Rob. Rob, you can go ahead. Thank you. Um, in terms of uh, the packet, uh, first of all, Terry Suave, thank you very much for the way you've used the website because it makes it very easy to follow the committee and how things have developed over time. Uh, the agenda on the web on the Fire Services Committee website has uh, 30 pages. The agenda that is posted in under the, the regular townships list is just the agenda, just sort of an FYI. Um, but the website is, in fact, I've stopped going through the township list to get to this committee. I've gone straight to the fire services um, webpage because it's much easier with the Zoom click link and all of the uh, documents are there. Um, there are two agendas out there? No, there are two packets. One is just an agenda and one is the balance. <laughs> oh, where is the where is the one that's just the agenda? Where is that one? On the meetings. Uh, oh, oh, um, okay. All right, so I got you. Clicked on All meetings right. on the front page of the. Who puts that out there? You. Does um, Christy do that. Christy does that. So there's an extra step in there. So depending on the timing of when the materials. Okay. Are finished and available. Sometimes we don't get it all up there. Until. Okay. All right. But at least it's available on the committee's web. Yes. Web I have direct access to that. So <laughs> that's a little easier for me to, okay. to deal with. All right. Okay. Mark, you're just... A couple, well, several more yeah. points. I'll try and be brief. Uh, one thing in our meeting with the chief at the fire station that really clarified things for me was in watching all of these meetings, I didn't quite understand what was involved in the two in two out definition and mm -hmm. in terms of education two in two out is when you're at a fire you have two firefighters who can go inside a building because there are two fires outside the building who can go in and rescue them if necessary and that means four people on staff uh, so that four people can respond and because and, and here's where i think this is important I think the $1.5 million mistake needs to be fixed sooner rather than later because of the lead time for hiring. And to highlight that because the chief hasn't had access to the funds and because the chief has had a fire department artificially put into debt, he hasn't been able to hire. And right now, Sio Township only has three people per shift. And we need to hire three more people so that we have four people per shift and we need we need to do that sooner rather than later we don't need to wait for the millage in other words no exactly that yes that's that's an independent recommendation of the millage yep. no, we don't have our trustee sitting here <laughs> the, uh, well we have a trustee listing oh that's true we um You're that, that, that 1.5 debt should be uh, um, waived today Takes some more you guys need to go? No, no we're good. Okay. Uh, All right. A couple more things. Uh, don't disband this committee. You guys are the perfect, well, not all guys. This committee is perfect. I would hope that you talked about coming back in three years. I would hope that you guys would come back every year measure what the throttling aspect of the millage is doing, and then make a recommendation to the Board of Trustees of how to adapt the next um, uh, aspect of the throttle, and maybe do that on a yearly basis. Um, Mark, thank you very much for highlighting your ethical approach and for your ethics. Uh, that is a breath of fresh air in Sio Township, sir. Thank you very much for that. And in terms of getting things on the ballot, I would suggest sooner rather than later. Again, like just like, oh, one more question. Um, the ambulance for Ann Arbor. Uh, because in the article, it talks they're going to do that now. Does that mean they're two years out from getting their ambulance because of the two-year lead time for the order? They had, uh, 
No. no. They had worked, <laughs> they worked an arrangement where they had one that was already produced reserved for them. Oh, okay. So they'll have it in January. You know, Ann Arbor is. Yes. The yeah. Dictatorship is the finest yeah. or most efficient form of government. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> So, but the whole point is that there are so many lead times associated with so many of your recommendations that the sooner you get the process started, the better. Um, it'll because it, it literally is going to uh, result in more saved lives. And that's it. Thank you all very much. This is a fantastic group, and we really appreciate all the effort. Well done. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Um, but isn't what Rob is suggesting? Isn't that a fire board? Kind of like kind of a fire board? I thought it was a finance director. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll leave it at that. Uh, any more public comment? <laughs> well, rem yes. Remember I said uh, several meetings ago that uh, would you guys be willing to, to have meetings in January? Because I saw ahead of what you were doing here, and I knew that there was going to need to continue guidance. So I I echo Rob's comment, and, and I agree that there is that's um, a need, but it's a, also kind of a big ask for for this group, for this specific group, to stay together. And there has to be, I think there what you're saying is there needs to be an advisory board or advisory panel to the board as an interface between the fire department and the board. Exactly. Yeah, okay. All right, anything else? Chief, no? no? Lance? All right, move to adjourn. Move. Second. All those in favor? Uh, Aye. Oh, Thank wait, 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 Mitch, oh. Mitch, Brian, did you guys have anything to say? You have, you've been kind of quiet. I'm sorry. You, are, you okay? I'm okay. Yeah. I'm I'm okay. Uh, or is Ryan? Okay. Maybe, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm fine. I I, I think that uh, everything that I had recommended also has been discussed. Looking at HVA for 1.5 is definitely worthwhile. Um, yeah, I, I echo everything that a lot of the other people in the public actually have been saying that this is a fantastic group and you're very knowledgeable and I'm learning a lot. Um, and definitely we should have a chart because it's getting complex and it's much easier to compare option two to option three, you know, with a chart. It shows the ISO, it shows the number of people, it shows the, you know, the uh, the millage requirements, uh, the two in, two out, all those things. It's, it's much easier to just see it on a simple chart. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Right, now we're here. Mark, Mark, recording. recording stopped. <laughs>